Hello everybody, I'm Alyssa and welcome back to Book Bar and welcome to my April anticipated releases. Um, there are quite a few in April that are coming out that I am excited for. Um, a lot of indie romances, there's some fantasy romances. Uh, I'm pretty excited for a lot of these. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get right on into it. There is a, I think they might all be romance. I don't think there's any that aren't romance, but I could be wrong. Um, I just write them down and then I go through and read them as we go along. So the first one that comes out on April 4th is Anna Maria and the Fox by Liana, Liana De La Rosa. Um, a forbidden love between a Mexican heiress and a shrewd British politician makes for a tantalizing Victorian, for a tantalizing Victorian season. Anna Maria Luna Valdez has strived to be the perfect daughter, the perfect niece, and the perfect representative of the powerful Luna family. So when Anna Maria is secretly sent to London with her sisters to seek refuge during the French occupation of Mexico, she experiences her first taste of freedom. Far from the judgmental eyes of her domineering father, if only she could ignore the piercing look she receives from she receives across the ballroom floors from the austere Mr. Fox. Gideon Fox elevated himself from London's gutters by chasing the burning desire for more, more opportunities and more choices for everyone. <clears throat> now as a member of parliament, Gideon's on the cusp of securing the votes he needs to put forth a measure to abolish the Atlantic slave trade once and for all, a cause that is close to his heart as the grandson of, grandson of a formerly enslaved woman. A the charmingly vexing Anna Maria is a, distraction, is a distraction he must ignore. But when Anna Maria finds herself in the crosshairs of a nefarious nobleman with his own political agenda, Gideon knows he must offer his hand as protection. But will this Mexican heiress win his heart as well? That sounds fantastic. Um, it sounds so fun. And like kind of historical vibes with also, I mean, I don't think it's contemporary, but like contemporary-ish vibes also so it sounds really fun and of course there's going to be a great rep so that is one that I am pumped for then the next one that I'm excited for is To Poison a King by S.G. Prince um this one might be young adult I don't know <clears throat> but it sounds really good. Um, S.G. Prince's new standalone is a breathtaking fantasy about sacrifice, self-discovery, and a girl tasked with saving the very man she aimed to kill. Celine is the youngest daughter in a gifted line of healers born to serve as the king's royal physician. Yet when Celine's mother, Perse... Pers I'm not going to try to say that, embroils her in a plot to kill the king, Celine finds herself poisoning the very man she's sworn to protect. Things seem bleak, but there is another problem. The po poison doesn't work, and the king doesn't die. Rather, he awakes from his coma paralyzed, aware of the attempt on his life, and furious. With the palace in a state of upheaval, and everyone hunting the king's poisoner, Persafi, Persafi flees, leaving Selene the task of rehabilitating the man she aimed to kill, all while hiding her true role in his demise. What follows is a journey spanning years and continents as a king and his servant develop into unlikely friends and more. Yet the closer Selene grows to the king, the more her secret weighs on her, as does her growing fear that her mother, having failed to kill him once, might try to ret might return to try again. Uh, it's a standalone fantasy romance. Oh, I love that. Adult standalone fantasy romance. Love standalones. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> there are some content warnings. So do go go ahead and read those if you do. This does sound interesting to you. But um, I'm excited for this. It sounds fantastic. And let's see. It is an indie. So that's exciting. That also comes out on April 4th. Um, which is exciting. It's great for Romathon because it's a fantasy romance. So bonus points, especially if you're on Team Cyrus, the best team to be part of. Next on April 6th, we have Coach by Devney Perry. Um, I don't think I've read an actual Devney Perry. I've read a Will and Ash book before, uh, which is Devney Perry's pen name, <clears throat> but I don't think I've read a Devney Perry, but this is a single dad sports romance. I mean, tell me less. Football star, single dad, and once a long time and once a long time ago, mine. Oh, second chance? <clears throat> That's even more of my favorite. I've spent the better part of a de decade forgetting Ford Ellis. If he just stayed away from Montana, I might have erased the memory of his striking blue eyes and rugged smile forever. Avoiding him was easy when the only place I saw was his face saw his face was on ESPN. 
and a remote control could fix the problem, except my boss just hired Ford as the new head coach of the Treasure State Wildcats. Not only will I be stuck watching him on the sidelines this city this season, but avoiding him will be impossible now that we're working together. Maybe I haven't forgotten Ford. Maybe I still dream about what we might have been, and maybe he hasn't forgotten me either. Except for those may except those maybes won't change the fact that we were never meant to be. He was mine once, but today the only thing I'll ever be calling Ford Ellis is coach. Um yes. I mean, do I need to say more? I mean, sports romance, adults, second chance, love it, yes. Um, then again, on the sixth, we have The Summer We Fell by Elizabeth O'Rourke. I've only read one other Elizabeth O'Rourke and I did enjoy it. So I'm excited to try another one. I actually got an arc of this one, so I will be reading this before the, due the publication date. Um, he was my boyfriend's best friend and the bane of my existence. I wanted to hate Luke Taylor. I did hate him. I just never hated him enough. Now, a decade later, tragedy has brought us back to the place where it all happened. My best times and my worst. Our lives have changed, but the pull between us is just as strong as ever. Only time, only this time, it's more dangerous, too. I mean, doesn't give you a ton, but boyfriend's best friend. So forbidden. Yes. Wonderful. Then on April 11th, we have A Realm of Ash and Shadow by Laura Buckheit. Um, I think this is young adult, so, but I also think it's indie and fantasy romance. So, 18 year old princess Valaria Beralt is sure of three things. She was exiled from the Empyrean because her father didn't want the hassle of raising her. Her perfect realm would be better off without a mortal raised smart, a smart ass with a foul mouth and a penchant for trouble. <clears throat> neither neither of these things would matter when a horde of demons crashes prom. Forced to fight for her life, Valeria, Valeria, why did I, I don't know. Valeria narrowly escapes being captured by the realm of the Forsaken only to be dragged back to the Empyrean before she is meant to return. Instead of the beautiful utopia from her bedtime stories, Val finds herself thrown into a hellish nightmare where the poor are dying, the rich are thriving, and her claim to the throne is in jeopardy, but not if Val Valeria can help it. The overwhelming desire to belong and craving for power has her making choices that will make it harder and harder to guard her heart against the man who's bound to protect her, if the god she's vowed to hate and the darkness that she was growing inside of her. Only time will tell if the secret she unravels and the alliances she makes will lead to to the throne or the pyre. A realm of ash and shadow has the drama, spice, and stabby energy from of from blood and ash, the sexiness and thrills of the kingdom of the feared, and the magnetic world building of Sarah J. Mass, making it a truly addictive fantasy romanticy that will utterly captivate you till the very end. So that sounds fantastic. Um, it's probably more new adult than young adult from the sounds of it, but still pumped for it. Um, <clears throat> definitely excited for that one. Then also on the 11th, we have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Um, I've only read one Abby Jimenez. I read Part of Your World and I absolutely adored it. Um, and I believe that this is like one of um, her uh, her friends, one of, like, wait, can't even think of her name, from the book. It's literally sitting in front of me. Alexis, one of Alexis's friends from the hospital. Um, and it's, I think maybe possibly even a, like it's epistolary, which is fun. Um, but yeah, so Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez on the 11th. A novel of terrible first impressions, hilarious second chances, and the joy of finding your perfect match. Dr. Brianna Ortiz's life is seriously flatlining. Her divorce is just about finalized. Her brother's running out of time to find a kitty donor. And the promotion she wants, oh, that's probably going to the new man doctor who's already registering 80 freaking seven on Brianna's pain in the ass scale. <clears throat> But when all systems are set to hate, Dr. Jacob Maddox completely flips the game by sending Brianna a letter. And it's a really good letter, like the kind that proves Jacob isn't actually Satan. Worse, he might be this fantastically funny and subversely likable guy who's just terrible at first impressions because suddenly he and Brie are exchanging letters, sharing lunch dates in, in her sob closet and discussing the merits of freakishly tiny horses. But when Jacob decides to give Brianna the best gift imaginable, a kidney for her brother, she wonders how she can resist this quietly sexy new doctor, especially when he calls in a favor she can't refuse. That just sounds wonderful. I'm really excited to read that one. Then also on the 11th is uh, If Only You by Chloe Lee. This is the sixth book in the Bergman Brothers series. Um, I'm not even gonna read what this one's about because it's Ziggy and someone, a teammate, I think, or a friend's teammate, I don't know. 
but it's Ziggy's story and Ziggy is um she is autistic so this one is our own voices because uh Chloe Lee is autistic so I'm really excited this is the sixth book in the Bergman brothers slash sister series um and Ziggy is the youngest so that means that Vigo is going to be the final one and I'm really excited for his romance because Vigo is like the romance book lover um of the family so super pumped for this one I like I said I'm not gonna read what it's about because um I mean while I'm looking at the cover it looks like it's probably Ren's teammate that she falls for so because he has like a king's jersey on and Ren played for the kings so that's exciting um I'm excited for this one for sure then on the 18th we have The Fiance Farce by Alexandria Bellafleur. Um, this is a sapphic romance so that sounds like it's a fake engagement slash possibly fake arranged or um, marriage of convenience so that's always exciting. Tansy Adams' greatest love is her family's bookstore passed down from her late father but when it comes to actual romance Tansy can't get past the first chapter. Tired of her stepfamily's questions about her love life, Tansy invents Gemma, a fake girlfriend inspired by the stunning cover model on a best-selling book. They'll never actually meet, so what's the harm in a little fib? Yet when real-life Gemma crosses Tansy's path, her white lie implodes. <clears throat> Gemma Van Dalen is a wild child, the outcast of her wealthy family, and now the latest heir to Van Dalen Publishing. But when, but with but the title comes with one tiny condition. She must be married in order to inherit. When Gemma discovers a beautiful stranger has been pretending to date her for months, she decides to take the charade one step further and announces, announces their engagement. Gemma needs a wife to meet the terms of her grandfather's will and Tansy needs money to save her struggling bookstore, bookstore. A marriage could be mutually beneficial if they can fool everyone into thinking as a love match. Unexpected sparks fly as Tam Tansy and Gemma play the role of affectionate fiancés and suddenly the line between convenient arrangement and real feelings begins to blur. <clears throat> but the scheming Van Dalen family won't give up the company without a fight and Gemma and Tansy's newfound happiness might get caught in the fallout. That sounds so fun. Um, I'm really excited for it. that one. Um, I want to read more sapphic romances because I just don't read a lot of them and I can never find ones that sound interesting and that one does sound really interesting so I'm excited for that. Then on the 25th we have Happy Place by Emily Henry. This one sounds like it's uh, a second chance romance so <clears throat> we're, I'm excited for that. Um, I I haven't loved any Emily Henry books like none have been like a perfect five star for me um they gave Beach Read five stars but that was before I really like was into like really reading um a ton of romance and so and then I gave People Who Made Navigation four and I think I gave Book Lovers four and a half so I don't know we'll see which is funny because Book Lovers and Beach Read are like less romance than People Who Made Navigation was and I liked that one the least so we'll see but a couple who broke up months ago make a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week-long vacation with their best friends in this glittering and a wise new novel from number one new york times best-selling author emily henry harriet and Wynne have been the perfect couple since they met in college they go together like salt and pepper honey and tea lobster and rolls except now for reasons they're still not discussing they don't they broke up six months ago and still haven't told their best friends which is how they find themselves sharing the largest bedroom at the main cottage that has been their friend group's yearly getaway for the last decade. Their annual respite from the world where one vibrant blue week they leave behind their daily lives, have copious amounts of cheese, wine, and seafood, and soak up the salty coastal air with people who under who understand them most. Only this year, Harriet and Wynne are lying through their teeth while trying not to notice how desperately they still want each other because the cottage for, for sale the cottage is for sale and this is the last week they'll all have together at this place. They can't stand to break their friends' hearts, so when they so they'll play their parts. Harriet will be driven will be the driven surgical resident who never starts a fight, and Wynn will be the laid back charmer who never cracks the show. Who never lets the crack show. It's a flawless plan if you look at it from a great distance and through a pair of sunscreen smeared sunglasses. After years of being in love, they how hard can it be to fake it for one week in front of those who know you best? <clears throat> So yeah, that sounds fun. I'm excited for it. Then on the 25th, I have A Rogue's Rules for Seduction by Eva Lay. Uh, I'm excited for this one. I haven't read, I've only read one Eva Lay and I enjoyed it. I need to read more, but this one just sounds fun. After Don Dominic Kilborn left Lady Willa Ransom at the altar, she vowed to never reveal how badly she was hurt. 
Following a year abroad, Willow wants to move on with her life, so she accepts an invitation to a house party. She's determined to leave the humiliation behind, as well as the scorching attraction she feels for the man who jilted her. When dark secrets from his past surfaced right before his wedding, Dom knew he didn't deserve Willa, so he bolted. It, but he still burns for the only woman who ever claimed his heart. To escape the memories of all he lost, Dom heads to a friend's estate on an isolated Scottish isle. Yet one of the other guests, the very woman who haunts... Yet one of the other guests is the very woman who haunts his every thought and makes him wish for the impossible. Thrown together by, by well-meaning family and friends, Willa and Dom try to resist the fiery pole between them. Soon, the line between love and loathing begins to burn and their attraction explodes. But Dom's past lurks on the edge of their rekindled passion, and Willa fears she'll be devastated all over again. Can these star-crossed lovers find their happily ever after, or will everything detonate a second time? Um, yes, that sounds fantastic. Uh, I love a good <clears throat> party and all of that. Then the final book that I'm excited for in this month is King of Pride by Anna Huang. This comes out on the 27th. This still does not have a cover or a full synopsis. So we'll see. I have not read King of Wrath yet, but I've read all of the Twisted series. So, and I should be able to get to King of uh, Wrath before this comes out. But uh, yeah, this is a steamy billionaire romance she is opposite in every way and the greatest temptation he's ever known that's all it says on goodreads uh, but i'm excited for it it's the end of the month so i should hopefully have king of wrath done if not i'll have it done early may so yeah i'm really excited for all of these releases let me know down in the comments what releases you're anticipating for april if there are any that i missed um this month had no i didn't find any like fantasies or historical fictions or anything that wasn't romance that I was excited for. So let me know down in the comments if you have any that you're excited for and anticipating next month. Um, and if you made it to the end of this video, leave me a pink heart emoji because the fiance of hers, the cover is pink and that one just, just stand out to me so much. So leave me a pink heart emoji and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. It really helps me out and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.